Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. My name's Charlie, and today I'm playing 100 Days in Minecraft with the Rats mod. Now, this is a really cool mod, and there are so many things you can do with these rats. I barely even scratched the surface. In these 100 days, I wanted to first and foremost travel to Ratlantis, but I also wanted to try out as many of the rat upgrades that I could and try and get as many fully functional farms as possible. Before I get into it, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everybody who watched my first video, left a like, or subscribed. I'm so blown away by all the positive feedback that you guys have left. I honestly did not think anybody who was unrelated to me would watch that video, and I'm just so grateful for each and every one of you, and I hope you enjoy this video just as much. And with that, let's dive right in. When I first spawned into the world, I ended up in a swamp with a bunch of animals, and I immediately was thinking, this is not prime real estate. I did not want a swamp house, so I got some wood, crafted some tools, killed some cows for food, and then went exploring to find a better place to build my base. I did some sick lily pad parkour, then I mined some materials and went to bed on top of a mountain. On the morning of day two, a cute little bee came by to say hello, so that, that was kind of nice, I liked that. After a whole day of exploring, I finally stumbled across a village. I stole all their belongings, and on my way out, I actually found a really nice spot to build my house, so I decided to set up camp and mine some materials. I also got the bejesus scared out of me by the spider. <gasps> oh my god. Jeez. Oh. I really wanted to get a rat to help me with some of the mining, and I read that the rats can actually steal food out of chests. So I left a little offering out in the open, just hoping a rat might come and I could tame it. I did a bit of mining and made myself an iron chest plate, and then I just went to bed in the corner of this cave. And as soon as I woke up on day three, I almost died. I don't even know how. Like, wh how am I so bad at this game? It's one skeleton. I also started smelting some stone and made a stone cutter. I had some big plans for the base that I wanted to build, and I wanted to lay down the foundation as soon as possible. No rats took my offering, which made me a bit sad, but I just continued to work on my castle. That night I explored the caves a bit more, and I found this massive hole, which I, of course, fell into. Oh! Oh no! Oh my god! No, 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 no. But I dug my way out, and I lived to see the sunrise on day four. For most of the day, I worked on my house and mined some iron. This mod is super iron heavy, like almost all the upgrades require iron tools, blocks, or bars, and you need cauldrons to make cheese too, so I just really wanted to stock up. Did I mention I planted trees in my house? Because I did, and I don't know why, I'm really not sure why. I also made myself some iron armor and a cauldron, nope, a cauldron, yes, so I could start making cheese. I also used one of the cauldrons to make a trash can, which would allow me to make garbage and spawn rats. I spent all of day five just working on my house. No, 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 absolutely not. You are not allowed. Oh my god. <laughs> I also started working on a basement so I could put all my stuff somewhere a little bit more accessible. On day six, I tried to add some texturing to the doorway, but I, I didn't realize that putting a wall next to the door would just leave a massive gap, so I just worked on my basement and then I went to bed. I realized at this point I really needed a roof, but I also needed rats more, so I built a little trash alley next to my castle and collected a bunch of garbage blocks by just tossing out dirt and junk I had lying around. I was a bit skeptical about if this would work because it was day seven and I hadn't seen a single rat, so I constructed this little pit and I placed the garbage blocks inside. I knew that to tame the rats I needed cheese, so I grabbed some milk and made my first batch of cheese, and that night I towered over to my garbage pit. <gasps> they exist! Let's have some cheese! Welcome! At this point, I needed to collect rats so they could do different tasks for me, but I also wanted to get as many of them as possible because if you get a certain upgrade, there's a chance that they'll drop tiny coins, which you need to craft mysterious token fragments, which are used to make mysterious token chunks. And once you get nine of these chunks, you can make the chunky cheese coin and open a portal to Ratlantis. Got it? Good. <laughs> On day eight, I made more cheese and went back to the pit, hoping to tame the rats, but when I got there, they were long gone. Uh, 
Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I spent most of the day mining out my basement until I started hearing some strange noises. Then I found this diseased rat on my doorstep and I was so confused. All I was thinking in my brain was plague equal death equal bad. So I just killed the plague rat and its invisible master. And I, I got a lead, which was nice, but this turned out to be a mistake as you'll see. By day nine, my basement had been dug out enough that I could move all my stuff down there. So I moved everything out of the cave and made a little furnace storage area under my house. On day 10, I continued to dig out my basement and then almost fell in this massive ravine. Oh my god. Whew. I decided that this was a real hazard for future Charlie, so I covered it up, but I didn't even have enough blocks to cover the whole thing, so... Remember this hole! The next day, I decided to go exploring and find some exotic new materials to use in my basement just to, to make it look cool. And after an entire morning of exploring, I settled on oak logs. Why? This doesn't even look good. What was I think? Oh my god, that's horrible. By the end of the day, I came to my senses and realized how absolutely horrible the oak looked and just laid the foundation for a new design. I also saw this skeleton wearing a hat. Look at it. I wanted that thing so bad. I ran out in an unlit field in the middle of the night to get it, but unfortunately, the skeleton didn't drop it. No. Also, as I was researching on the Wikipedia for this mod, I realized that I messed up real bad. This guy literally trades for mysterious token fragments, which are the exact item I need. So that's good. On day 12, I decided that today was the day I would tame my first rat. In the morning, I nabbed some cows so that I could make cheese more easily. I moved all my cauldrons next to the cow pen and just started making an absurd amount of cheese. And that night, I camped out in the pit and started feeding cheese to all the rats that spawned. I had a couple rats that were interested, but then this guy appeared. These guys are the worst. I tried to kill him, but somehow he ended up infecting every single rat in the pit, and I had to get rid of them all and just start over. Eventually, though, I ended up getting my first rat friend. Yes! Yes! The next morning, I decided I wanted to make a tunnel connecting the pit to my castle. In the process, I tamed another wild rat that was just chilling in the grass, and afterward, I crafted my first rat cage which I could use to breed them. Also, look at this guy. He's so cute. He just sits on my head. I feel like Linguini from Ratatouille. This is amazing. I tried to breed my rats, but I realized that I actually needed to make a rat breeding lantern before I could do that, which meant I needed to go to the nether. On the morning of day 14, I continued to work on my tunnel, and that night, I decided to go back to the pit, which was positively overrun with plague rats at this point. I was not a fan of having the plague, so I chilled for the rest of the night just working on my basement. I kept working on the walls, and I also made a little underground farming area. On day 15, I overcame my fear and murdered all the plague rats, and then realized that I had accidentally given my cows the plague too. For their own safety, I decided to have them self-isolate for a couple days. Now that I had a nice tunnel from the pit to my castle, I could get rid of this ugly tower that I made earlier, and the next day I got the Just Enough Items mod, which allowed me to see all the crafting recipes for the rat mod. This was honestly a massive game changer because most of the crafting recipes were not easy to find online. So that day, I made my first rat upgrade, which would allow me to assign rats to mine ore for me. Like, how sick is that? Look at them with their little pickaxes, they're so cute! On day 18, I brought them down to the cave and they actually started mining, which was super cool. I figured I would let them do their thing and continue to try and tame more rats in the meantime. No, 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 no! The next day, I realized that I could make this rat radius staff, which was supposed to allow me to control the radius that the rats harvest within, but it didn't work, so I figured if I could bring them to Y12, there would be more things to mine there. Oh uh, boy. As soon as I brought all the rats downstairs, they immediately ran all the way back up, so I chased after them. But when I brought them back down, they just ran away again. As I was messing around with the rat radius staff, the third rat eventually ran away too, so I just gave up on that for the time being. <sighs> on day 20, I released my cows and villager? I, what is this guy even doing here? I don't even remember when he got here. 
The isolation had worked, they no longer had the plague. I spent the rest of the day working on my underground farm. By day 21, I had my sights set on the Pied Piper Flute, which would allow me to control any rats in the area. I felt so smart stealing the terracotta from the villager house, but then I realized I needed just regular terracotta, so that was pretty annoying, and I decided to give up and just work on my house some more. The next day, I realized that my mining rat was doing absolutely nothing. I even helped him out a bit, and just nothing was happening. I was getting so fed up. I was actually about to kill him until... <laughs> Wait, what? what? That night, we had another casualty. I thought that maybe he could swim because he'd been in there for like a minute and nothing had happened, but uh... Yeah, no, he's, he's very dead. Rats can't swim, noted. On day 23, I decided it was time to head into the nether and get some glowstone so that I could make the rat breeding lanterns. I very quickly and efficiently made a nether portal and then headed into the nether. And my nether spawn was not the greatest I've ever seen. There was even a piglin just sitting there ready to attack me, so I thought I could just come back later with better gear. Nothing really notable happened on day 24, but on day 25, I made some golden boots and went back into the nether to get the glowstone. On day 26, I tried to make the lanterns, but I realized that I didn't have enough string, so I spent the night killing spiders. By day 27, I finally had all the materials I needed for the lanterns, which meant I could breed the rats that I had already tamed. I thought this would be a much more effective way of getting rats than using the pit because at this point it was just infested with plague rats. The next day I made some strength rat upgrades and I was so excited to have a warrior rat that I immediately gave them to these guys and put them to the test. I set them up to deposit mob drops in the chest next to the castle and set them off. Literally as soon as I got back in my house, this enderman had slain both of my warrior rats, and this meant war. This man had just made a declaration of war between endermen and rats. This will not be forgotten. After seeing how horribly that went, I decided to try and get this diamond warrior rat upgrade instead, hoping it might work a bit better. To do this though, I needed some glistening melon which requires a lot of work. On day 30, I was reminded that I desperately needed a roof, but first I had to start trading with the farmers in the village so I could hopefully get that glistening melon. I needed a lot of emeralds, so I decided to make a Fletcher because trading sticks is a super reliable way to make a ton of money. I spent the morning of day 31 making a bunch of cheese and then realized I was just tired of making it myself. I wanted to make this bucket upgrade, but in order to do it, I needed some stained glass. Before heading out to collect sand, I checked on my mining rats, and yeah, they're, they're just scuffed. They're not working. I spent a ton of time trying to reset them and get them to work, but eventually I just gave up and headed back up to the house. <gasps> oh my god! <sighs> on day 32, I traded a bit more in the village, got a rat to harvest the crops in my underground farm, and worked on my second floor for a bit. That night, I went and collected sand so that I could finally make the bucket upgrade. I made the bucket upgrade and gave it to this guy because he's just been chilling on the cauldrons here for a really long time. I put all the cows on leads and attached them to a fence post so the rat would be able to reach them and then I crafted this curdling station for him to deposit the milk into. Then I finally finished my roof and I even added some little parapets because what kind of castle doesn't have cool parapets? On day 34, I tried to get this rat to collect all the stuff that fell out of the trees I cut down, but for some reason this guy was not having it. Like, there's a sapling right there, why are you not picking it up? I finished up my second floor and realized that my milk boy was incredibly efficient, so I hired him an assistant to put the completed cheese into these barrels. In the time that I went to the village to trade and came back, they somehow made 40 blocks of cheese. These are by far my most efficient rats, I love these guys. On day 35, another one of these plague doctors came to visit, and although he didn't have the token fragments I needed, he had some decent traits, so instead of immediately murdering him, I trapped him in a box of dirt. I realized that he was buying 10 rat carcasses for an emerald each, which was just amazing. I was about to be a very rich gal because I had tons of these things just sitting downstairs. Never mind. Afterward, I made the planter upgrade, but it didn't work at first. He just kept grabbing things out of my chest and placing them on the floor. Oh, yeah. 
Don't look at that. Don't worry about it. Afterward, I bought a rat sack and then traded with the villagers so I could buy the golden rat skulls and get the Aristorat upgrade. This upgrade is the one that lets rats poop out the mysterious tokens that you can use to ultimately get to Ratlantis. Also, this is Norbert. He just stands guard next to this door, but he's so cute. I think he's my favorite of all the rats that I have. I realized that I needed wool to make the top hat for the Aristorat upgrade, so I got a sheep and brought it back to the castle. I made the shearing rat upgrade and set up this little guy to start collecting wool. After seeing the cheese making rats, I had so much confidence that my mining rats could do it, so I got two new rats and equipped them with the upgrade. <gasps> he's doing it! Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> I spent the rest of the day just mining myself and found some diamonds. On day 37, I made a pen for my sheep and realized I should probably find another sheep to increase productivity. As I was heading out of the village that night, I somehow accidentally hit a villager, forcing me to hide for the night because I was not about to get killed by an iron golem. Oh, no, 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 not good, not good, not good, not good. I had to take a roundabout way home the next day and I saw these guys just stuck on a cliff. Just vibing up there, I love it. I wanted to stay out of the village for a while, so I went exploring and realized there's a massive jungle just on the other side of the mountain. I also found a panda and I was so happy because pandas are by far my favorite animal. Stay here, I will come back for you. I accidentally wandered out too far and couldn't make it out of the jungle by the time it got dark, so I spent the night in a tree. I tried to get back home the next day, but I got super lost, and after wandering around the world for an entire day and just jumping from tree to tree all night, I finally made it home. That night, I made the diamond mining rat upgrade, and I thought maybe if I could specify the ores to mine, they would actually be able to do it. But no, still didn't work. They just suck. They just suck so bad. I got so fed up, I just told him to mine stone and thought maybe if he could just dig all the stone out so the ores were exposed, then some other rat could mine those easily and they might actually be able to do their job. On day 40, I made my first Aristorat upgrade. Ooh, look at this one. Welcome to the aristocracy. On day 41, I realized that I could get terracotta by smelting clay, so I collected a bunch of clay next to the village. I really wanted the Pied Piper flute because manually toggling the tasks was kinda tedious. While I was collecting it though, I realized I had made a grave error. I forgot that my Aristorat was just vibing on top of my head and now he was stuck in the water. But there was nothing I could do. After grieving, I put all my rats in a rat sack, appointed a new Aristorat, and made the rat flute. Then, I went outside to test out the flute and released my small rat army, and they were actually so effective. Like, I don't even need the dumb warrior upgrade, I just need a bunch of rats. I guess power in numbers, that makes sense. The next day, I was intent on building my rat army, so I just took stacks of cheese and went into the pit to recruit more rats, and it was actually going pretty well. Oh, no, 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 please, no, 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 no! Things just evolved into chaos. Half the rats became diseased and started attacking me, and the ones that I had successfully tamed were attacking them, and I had just realized I'd had enough of the pit for the day, so I packed up my rats, left to kill some mobs, and immediately almost drowned every single rat that I owned. No, no, no! Come here! Come here! Oh, no, no, no! Yes! How does it feel, buddy? On day 43, I almost killed my plague doctor by suffocating him in a wall, and then I spent the rest of the day making a hidden little base for my rat army. I didn't want them to always be following me, and I also didn't want them too close to the castle, otherwise all of the job rats would reset, so I hid them in the mountain. I spent most of day 44 renovating the villager houses and doing some chores around the village. I started farming my sugar cane so that I could get an enchanting table, and... What? How? What? That night, I continued to recruit rats in the pit and just listen to these noises for so long. This is all I hear is just furious munching and pooping noises. It's horrible. The next day, I started making some bookshelves and realized that my mining rat with the super expensive diamond upgrade was nowhere to be found. He just disappeared. He didn't even mine that much stone. 
While mining that night, I found a mine shaft, but there were a bunch of mobs in there, so I decided to just save that for another day. I realized I needed obsidian for the enchanting table, so I grabbed some from around my nether portal. Then, I moved the plague doctor out of my doorway and into the corner of my house. On the morning of day 46, I visited my rat army. What? I felt guilty for killing so many of my rats, so I decided to make a rat monument next to the entrance of my castle. It was going pretty well until I started getting attacked by phantoms, and I just left it there without a head, which is honestly ironic. Like, that was pretty much the opposite effect from what I was going for. The next day, I made the rat crafting upgrade, and I also made these little chef hats. And look, I am actually Linguini from Ratatouille. Oh, I'm just wearing a hat. Nothing to see here. Oh, just kidding. There's a rat under there. I put my rat on the cheese crafting table and tested it out, and it actually worked. Look at his little arms. He's just going. On day 48, I decided to get my first rainbow rat, and just look how cool this is. I'm gonna name this rat Remy. He's my new favorite. And in fact, I think Remy should be the king of the rats. Or no, maybe not the king. That's too much power. Maybe like the sergeant of the rats. I grabbed a bunch of cheese blocks and headed out of the house because I had an idea for a super special project. Okay, special project's gonna have to wait until tomorrow. Oh, what's up? My special project is gonna be a castle entirely made out of cheese. And so the next morning I found the perfect location for it and got started on building. Aw oh, yeah, listen to the squinch. This is the best building material. As I was building my castle, I saw a pillager outpost squadron. What is that even called? A patrol? I think it's a patrol. It doesn't matter, I killed them all anyway. That night, I made my enchanting table and placed it by my bookshelves. The next day, I saw another squadron while I was building, and I just thought to myself, I'm so dumb, I can just kill them with all my rats. Yeah, didn't go too well at all. Eventually though, my rats killed them all and I went back to building. As I was working on the cheese palace, ooh, the chalice. Oh, I like that. A wandering trader got trapped inside. I was excited to see what kind of stuff he had, but um, yeah, he didn't make it too long. The next day, I lit up the inside of the chalice because it was just a liability at this point. I also took the only remaining llama and attached him to a fence post. Afterward, I worked on collecting bookshelves for most of the afternoon. Oh my god, this is so bad. I really need to fix this. By the end of the day, I had finally finished my bookshelves and enchanted some of my stuff. I got efficiency 4 and fortune 2 on my pickaxe and also efficiency 4 on my axe, which was pretty sweet. On day 52, I went mining with my new fortune pickaxe and found some diamonds. I ended up making a diamond chest plate and enchanted it with protection 3, unbreaking 3, and thorns 2. I look so cool, and honestly so does Remy. I love this rat, this is my favorite for sure. The next day, I used my big brain and left my rats on land before going in the water. I wanted to make some yellow glass and create an enclosure for all my aristorats where the tokens would just automatically be collected. That way, I wouldn't always have to be running around and collecting them by hand. On day 54, I created my Aristorat enclosure and continued to make mysterious token fragments, and on day 55, I gave all my farmer rats these little straw hats. By day 56, I really wanted a mending book, so I decided to make some fishing rats. To make the fishing upgrade, I needed to get a lot of fish, because I needed them for fish barrels and also for the upgrade itself. I got really distracted though and just tried to get these puffer fish into buckets. After collecting a fair amount of fish, I grabbed my rat and headed home. That night, I made the fishing upgrade, grabbed one of my rats, and headed to the island where I wanted to make a little fishing house. <sighs> the next day, I carefully brought a rat to the shack and gave him the upgrade, and he actually started catching some fish, which was pretty surprising. I believe in you. Please catch a mending book. Afterward, I decided it was finally time to finish the rat statue outside my castle. Oh god. I changed his eyes and gave him some cheese and it made him look substantially better. That night, I went to trade with my Fletcher and things got a little dicey. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. No, no, no. Go back in. Go back in. Why are there so many of them? On day 58, I made another aristocrat and mined for the rest of the day. The next day, I enchanted my boots, watched my little farmer rats for a bit, repaired my pickaxe, and made another fishing rat. It was honestly just a super productive day for me. I even finished the chalice. On day 60, I realized I would need a lot of sticks to get the emeralds for more arista rats, so I made the lumberjack rat upgrade. I was honestly shocked to see that he was doing his job. I even successfully changed his working radius, so I guess the mining rats just suck. Because the chalice was finished, I decided to move all my rats inside and then just mine for the rest of the night. All I did for day 61 was make cheese walkways in the village and mine out all the garbage in the pit because I was sick of the stupid plague rats. Day 62 was an extremely tragic day. I was just going around town with my boy Remy, doing some village maintenance for the whole day. Then, as I was working on renovating the village center, After recovering from the initial shock, I collected his remains and framed them in my basement. But my job as overlord wasn't done yet and I needed to move on, so the next morning I made an automatic rat-powered top hat making system. For the rest of the day, I went mining and I thought about exploring that hole that I fell into on like day four, but there were a bunch of mobs, so I decided against it. On day 64, I collected red dye for my top hats and enchanted some diamond leggings. Then, I spent day 65 just making mysterious token fragments and constructing a cheese throne for me to sit in. The next day, I created some festive rat-themed banners which I hung in the doorway of the chalice. Then I continued to work on making Arista rat upgrades to speed up my token collecting. I spent the entirety of day 67 exploring the mineshaft and collecting ore. Oh, that looks so sketchy. If I go in there, I'm getting killed by a creeper, 100%. Oh, oh my god! On day 68, I did this? I also realized that the Aristorat that I had been carrying around was missing, which was very not good. I realized that I must have somehow left him in the mine shaft, so I journeyed back down and went to look for him. Just as I was about to give up, I actually found him. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it! Yes, he's here! That night, I traded for more emeralds and, uh... took care of business. On day 69, I replaced all the stairs to my mine with cheese, just cuz, and then I made some cheese stepping stones to my fishing shack and added windows to the chalice. I mined for all of day 70 and got my third mysterious token chunk that night. On day 71, I continued to renovate the villager houses because they looked really ugly, and then I made an Aristorat upgrade and this spooky skeleton upgrade. Look at this man, he is not to be messed with. On day 72, I visited my fishing rats. Ooh, ooh, ooh! They were actually super productive. Like, there's three stacks of fish here, but I was starting to think they couldn't actually fish up mending books or name tags or anything. I also made more rat cages so that I could breed more rats for my army, because the pit was no longer functional. On day 73, I decided that I wanted to get a beehive, so I made a campfire and shears, and I set out to find some bees. Now pay attention here, this is a Minecraft masterclass. First, place your campfire. Second, whip out your shears. Destroy the beehive, burn yourself on the fire, and then destroy your campfire as well. Saddened by the loss of my beehive, I decided to start bringing this panda back to my base because I really wanted a panda. So I put him in a boat and made a path leading home. After two whole days of leading him back, it was starting to get dark again, so I hid in the mountain and mined for the night. No! Why is he on fire? No, 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 no! Oh. I had almost got him back home, but as it started to get dark again, I decided not to risk killing him, so instead I went and explored the caves under my house. Look at this juicy piece of real estate. I love this place. I'm gonna do something cool here. On day 76, I finally got the panda back to the chalice. He looks so happy. I love this guy. I'm gonna name him Gorgonzola. 
On day 77, I made my fourth token chunk and then worked on my cave hideout. Look at this texturing though. God, I'm so good at this game. I spent all of day 78 collecting mysterious tokens, and on day 79, I decided to return to the nether to try and find a fortress, but immediately lost all courage and left. Instead, I explored the mineshaft and found a name tag. I explored until day 80 and just mined a bunch of ores, and on day 81, I finished my cave hideout. Look how sick it is. I love this place. It's such a nice view, and the hanging cheese is just so elegant. This is, this is great. That night, I ended up getting this crazy good bow with Unbreaking 3, Power 4, Punch 2, and Flame. So for the rest of the day, I just shot at mobs and had my rats kill them. The next day, I had the genius idea of making some archer rats, so I traded for some bows in the village and made a couple archer upgrades. I made the rest of my Arista rats rainbow, and then I upgraded some of the other rats to archers. That night, I, again, killed mobs with my rats and got some mysterious tokens from it. On the morning of day 83, I made some more Aristorat upgrades and admired my lovely Aristorats. They've been producing so many tokens and they just look cool. After, I decided to keep killing mobs, but um, it went terribly wrong. <gasps> no, 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 don't come in. No, 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 no. Wait, what? Did you see that guy fly? This stupid creeper exploded literally right next to my Aristorat enclosure and killed most of my rat army. I was so devastated by this and I had to spend the rest of the day just fixing the chalice. On day 84, I trapped another plague doctor and fully upgraded my farmer, meaning that I could finally get glistening melon. I made my sixth token chunk and then I made these cool banners which I put up literally anywhere I could find. I really just went crazy with these. I even put one on my shield. Look at that. Gorgonzola, what is up, my guy? I spent all of day 85 renovating the village, and on day 86, I just made token chunks and worked on the houses. I wanted to make more Aristorats the next day, but I was out of gold, so I went to the nether to look for some. I ended up getting a little bit, but I also almost got destroyed by this piglin. <gasps> At this point, I had a bunch of Aristorats, so it seemed like only a matter of time before I got enough tokens to make the chunky cheese coin. For the majority of day 88, I continued exploring the mineshaft, and when I got back, these boys were just walking around in my basement, which I absolutely could not stand for, so I murdered them both. Then, I spent the rest of the day recruiting rats for my army and collecting tokens. The next day, I started to prepare for my journey to Ratlantis by gathering all my rats together and making the Diamond Rat Warrior upgrade. I was facing the very real possibility that I might not return from Ratlantis, so I wanted to appoint an assistant to the Overlord who would take my place if needed. I thought that no rat would be better for the job than Norbert. I mean, this guy has made sure no mob has entered the castle since the very beginning. Look at him with this little banner, I'm so proud. The next day, I finally got all nine chunks, and I put them together to make the chunky cheese token. I bought some arrows, gathered my rats in their rat sacks, and with Norbert atop my head, I entered the portal to Ratlantis. And it didn't work, so I entered again, and I was finally teleported to Ratlantis. I was super shocked to see that I was literally surrounded by water. Like, that, that really makes all the time I spent breeding and taming rats for a massive, unstoppable rat army so useless. Oh my god, what is that? That does not look friendly. Wait, is it swimming at me? Oh my god. <gasps> Would you like some cheese, sir? He doesn't want the cheese. He doesn't want the cheese. Oh no. These things are not friendly either. Oh my god, they're shooting fireballs. <gasps> no, 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 no. Tower, tower, tower. Oh my god. Oh 
Oh, cheese, 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 cheese. Tower, tower. That was an accident, but it's probably for the best. Oh my god. Oh my god, why is everything trying to kill me? I thought Ratlantis would be nice. Okay, I can do this. No! No, I can't! No, I can't! Please! Oh my god, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Please! Please! Is that a little rat toga? <gasps> is that a rat fish? A rish? <laughs> yeah, Ratlantis was not being kind to me, but eventually I made it to this little monument next to the jungle and mined some blocks. Then I caught myself a rish, a ratfish, and went back to the real world to regroup. For starters, Norbert needed to stay in the real world or he was gonna die. Also, he needs this toga, not for any reason, just because it's adorable. Uh, what? How are you here, my guy? I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. Oh my god. I killed the little floating rat head and then realized that Norbert had died? But he was still just sitting next to the portal. And I know there's one at home with a toga on, so are there three of him? I don't know anymore, man. I'm so confused. On day 93, I decided to start building a base in Ratlantis. I also did some exploring, but there were some terrifying noises coming out of this structure, so I very carefully mined my way down until... <gasps> no, 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 no! Oh my god, why do his arms move like that? No, 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 please die, please die. <gasps> yes, burn to death, burn to death. What? Oh my god. I took the gold out of the chest, found this funky statue, and continued working on my base. The next day, I had a plan to make little ponds in front of my chalice. I really wanted to put some of the ratfish in there because I thought they were really cool, so I basically just landscaped all day. It takes a shockingly long amount of time to fill an empty hole with water. While doing some research on day 95, I realized you could spawn an actual rat king. Like in the game, there's a mob called the Rat King. As the overlord of this world, I couldn't stand for this. The way that you spawn him is by first using garbage to make compressed garbage, and then once you have that, using the compressed garbage to make filth, and then using the filth to make a ball of filth. It was a pretty involved process, honestly, and it took me the entire day. On day 96, though, I had my ball of filth and I chose a rat to become the Rat King. I put him in this box of cheese and then I transformed him with the ball of filth. What is that? Oh my god! I stood on this cheese tower and shot at him with arrows until he died, and look what I got. An actual crown. Oh my god, I'm getting killed. I'm getting killed. I'm getting killed. I feel like just having this crown really just made me feel more powerful. After killing the Rat King, I jumped back into the portal to Ratlantis and immediately just started getting killed. I had no idea what was going on. The worlds were just glitching and then I caught on fire and it was a whole thing. Then I got entirely surrounded by like six of those feral Ratlanteans, which was honestly not the most ideal situation. I ended up just spending the night in the real world because being in Ratlantis at night is just not good. On the morning of day 97, I finished up my house in Ratlantis and decided to explore the flying ship. It seemed like nobody was on it, so I just kind of started looting all the chests and looking around. I saw this bell, but it looked really suspicious. Like, I had a feeling that something bad would happen if I rung this bell, so I just didn't let myself do it. I found a ton of cool loot in the chests on this boat, but as it started to get dark out, I really didn't want to die, so I went back to my house. Look at this, I got three tiny rat togas, this rat automaton head, which I don't even know what this does, but it looks cool, and then these little pirate hats. This is great! Look how cute these hats are. I love them.
That night, I made a massive mistake and opened the door to my house. One of those annoying floating rat heads just phased through the wall, started shooting fire at me, made me kill one of my own rats, and then I had to just run out of the house and jump in the water or else I was gonna die. Once I had killed it, I decided to just spend the rest of the night swimming around getting ratfish for my ponds. Nope, can't even swim around here without getting attacked. Why does everything here want to kill me constantly? On day 98, I decided it would be a good idea to put some trophies on my throne. I thought it looked a little classy. Then I released all my ratfish into the ponds and added a nice trim with the ratlantean blocks I'd collected. Afterwards, I made a little area for the Aristorats next to the throne, not because they were all that special or anything, just because they kept pooping out coins and it was super annoying. I made one for the Pyrats too, and then set up some security detail around Norbert. Mm. On day 99, I decided I wanted to make a final monument, so I grabbed some of the wool that I had collected and I started building. This Enderman statue is a symbol of the rat's strength. I decided that because it was the last night, I wanted to sleep in the castle where it all started. Honestly, most of day 100 was just me walking around and reminiscing on all the memories I'd created in this world. I had tamed so many great rats and made some pretty efficient rat-powered farms too. I thought about Remy, the fallen king, and as the day came to a close, I shot rats off into the sunset. Look at this thing. They go so far. I wonder how much damage this would actually do to a person. Oh god, wait, can these rats swim? Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to leave a like or subscribe and thank you again for all of your support. Bye! <laughs> Oh my god. That was not well thought out. Okay.